Hello everyone, this is just a quick channel update because we've not been uploading regularly really, have we? Uh, this working from home lark is taking its toll in ways I never really expected it to, to be honest. I expected to have more time, expected to have more, do more live streams, do more video uploads, uh, at least in the meantime, but just find myself lacking the motivation to do it, to be honest with you. Uh, but we have got some videos coming. Uh, I do have my retro gaming PC. Uh, it's ready and set up. Uh, a few hitches uh, getting it set up. Uh, running Windows XP in 2020, that's going to be a video. Uh, that is not easy these days. Uh, you tend to forget how... How easy it is. Uh, modern PCs are so much easier to run than you forget like what we had what we used to have to do uh, to get our PCs configured and uh, you know it, it's been difficult uh, to, to get certain things. Drivers for this PC have been difficult. It is a bit of an overkill uh, for a retro gaming PC but we've got everything set up now and we can start capturing as well. Uh, capturing gameplay footage. One of the biggest problems we've had is that Steam is no longer supported on Windows XP and there was a version, archived version of Steam, uh, which was available, uh, that was the last version of Steam that supported Windows XP. Uh, it has had the auto updates disabled but I couldn't get it to run. I mean, I can get it to load up with the sort of login screen and I supply my login details and what it does is it just comes up with uh, a fail to connect to Steam server, you click retry and then it just crashes. Uh, so I've no idea how to get Steam workings. That is a bit of a shame because most of my game collection is on Steam. GOG, uh, GOG Galaxy is not supported uh, by, uh, again, on Windows XP, but you can go to GOG.com and you can log into your account, and what you can do is you can download a standalone installer. It's a bit of a shame that GOG Galaxy isn't supported, because GOG mostly do retro games. That's what they do, it's good old games, that's the, what it's called. Uh, so they usually do retro games, but what you can do is you can get a standalone offline installer. So I just download that to my main PC, copy it to a USB stick, uh, again, and then copy it over to my retro PC, and you can install the game and play it offline, because they're DRM free, so you get like a little GOG installer. Uh, you own the game, so you can install it on as many PCs as you want. There's no DRM, there's no restrictions. That's one of the good things about GOG. Steam, you can usually do that with most games as well, install them, but you have to have the Steam client running. So if the Steam client is not supported, then you can't do it. So there goes uh, testing games like Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike Source, uh, Counter-Strike 1.6 we could have tested, but we can't. Uh, do any of those games. We can do Half-Life 1 because Half-Life 1 doesn't require Steam. So what I've done is I have spent time uh, going around charity shops, uh, visited CEX as well and went on eBay uh, to buy a selection of PC games uh, on this thing called it's something called a digital versatile disc read-only memory. I don't know. Uh, it's been a while since we've used them. DVD-ROM and CD-ROM, which is a compact disc, if you didn't know. Uh, so we bought a few of them. Very cheap. Uh, you can find a lot of good PC games for cheap. I did manage to pick up Crisis, so hopefully it runs Crisis. Uh, Crisis was released uh, as a DX9 client uh, on disc, although there is a DX... I think there's a, I think there's a DX10 version of Crisis. I don't... It does stay on the requirements, it'll run on Windows XP, uh, so hopefully it runs on XP, uh, I'm hopeful. We bought a few games, what, what, what I wanted to achieve with that PC was games from the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, so games mostly from the kind of Xbox 360 era we can get up to. Windows XP, uh, we can't run modern games on Windows XP because it only supports DirectX 9, not DirectX 11 or 12 now. Um, it doesn't support DX10 either, that was Windows Vista, and there's no way we're putting that monstrosity of an operating system on a retro PC. We want to game on it, and Windows Vista was a terrible OS for gaming. 
So I feel like XP is the correct choice because it's got quite a good sort of legacy support. Um, and it is, you know, it does support... I think it's probably the, the best OS that Microsoft made in terms of legacy support uh, for older games. It is also 32-bit, so we can run like 16-bit DOS games on it as well. Uh, so that is the best option for games from the late 90s, early 2000s, that kind of 3D games that we want to play. Uh, so we'll have a video on that just to see how well they perform. I have tried a few games. I tried Unreal Gold and Soldier of Fortune 2. And again, they're games from that era and they ran pretty well on it. Again, the system is overkill. Uh, it was a system that we ha I had in 2010. Uh, so pretty overkill. It's got a Core i5-650, which has two cores and four threads running at 3.2 gigahertz. So again, way overkill for those kinds of games that released. Uh, well, Soldier of Fortune 2 was 2002, and I think Unreal, was Unreal Gold was 1998, if I'm not mistaken. I think Unreal was 1998. Unreal Gold came later on. But we, again, these are just two games that I tried uh, from GOG. Uh, that I own. Pity can't get the Steam library, but PC games are dirt cheap, I found. I spent about less than £20 and managed to get nine games, including uh, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Uh, not Jedi Knight 2, should point out, different. There's two Jedi Knight 2 games. There's Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, and there's Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. I didn't buy Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast because I already own that on the Nintendo Switch. Pretty good game. I put cheats in to get a lightsaber right away because I can't be bothered with the shooting sections. I am impatient and will go to the dark side. I want to shoot lightning out of my hands and have a lightsaber. You know, I'm going straight to the dark side, simply, uh, on that game. So we've got, um, again, that we managed to snag Mysteries of the Sith as well, which was the expansion to that. £3.30 for a classic PC game doesn't come in the big box, it comes in like a DVD case, but, you know, the big box version was like £30 uh, if you wanted a fully boxed version of uh, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, not Jedi Knight 2, not to be confused with that. It's, it's a confusing series, the Jedi Knight series, because the first one was called Dark Forces, and then you've got Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, and then you've got Mysteries of the Sith, which was the expansion. And then they had Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, and then the final one, the final Jedi Knight game. God, I missed the Jedi Knight games. Uh, the final one was Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, um, which had customizable characters. And we did a video on that uh, a few years ago. Uh, Jedi, well, we did Jedi Academy in 2017. It released in 2017, uh, surprisingly. And uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, again, Sad that the uh, Jedi Knight series is no more, although Jedi Fallen Order is a pretty decent game. Uh, probably the best modern equivalent of the Jedi Knight series. But it would have been, ni be nice to get a Jedi Knight HD collection. Would be nice, EA, just saying. Uh, although they are available on Origin and on Steam, but I don't have access to Steam on that Windows XP PC. And again, Jedi Knight... Um, Dark Forces 2. God, I, that is such a confusing name to say. Let's just call it Dark Forces 2. Uh, just doesn't run on Windows 10. If you just buy the vanilla version of it from Steam, uh, it doesn't run on Windows 10, which is a shame though, because I, I like retro games, and I think that retro operating systems, if Steam are going to sell you retro games, either make sure they work on Windows 10 without mods, or supply the mods. We are going to do a video on Dark Forces 2. That reminds me because it is very difficult to get running. And we did do a video on it um, a while back with Windows 7. Of how to get it running with 3D hardware acceleration. I will do a video on how to get uh, Dark Forces 2. Je Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. God, that na game name is confusing. It's confusing the hell out of me. I will do a video on how to get that running at modern resolutions uh, with 3D hardware acceleration. I just keep forgetting to do it. Uh, so I'm going to do that at some point because I have figured it out or someone on Steam has figured it out and made a tutorial of it. I will show you um, how you can get that running uh, if you'd like me to do so. But I will. Uh, that will come some point. I mean, uh, it's one of those things. It's getting the time to sit and do it. 
um, is the problem. Uh, just getting time to sit and do videos. We've got a video on Halo 3 coming. Uh, but I've been working on the modern PC. I've uh, been playing a few. been playing Kingdoms of Amalur, Re Reckoning, and Marvel's Avengers. Had to buy them on Xbox One. Although I didn't realize Kingdoms of Amalur launched on GOG. I'm like, ah, damn it. Uh, I bought it on Xbox One because I had to play it on my Xbox One X because, of course, I'm banned uh, from buying stuff on the Steam store. I do not have the privilege of giving Gabedon money. He has revoked my money-giving privileges until the 24th of September. Uh, but yeah, we'll be been working from home. Uh, I don't like it. I don't know about you guys, but I really hate working from home. I don't know, I mean, maybe because you're that used to, you know, you sit here in your room with your sort of gaming PC set up, and you're set up to relax, and then all of a sudden you got to do work, and especially the kind of work I do, I tend to have arguments with people, because that's what I do, I'm a complaints handler, so I'm dealing with people who are unhappy, shouting at me most of the time, and I'm ex you know, expected to have arguments with people. And the problem I have with that is, you know, when you go to your room, you tend to go to retreat from conflict, don't you? You know, you want to relax, you want to sit down, you want to play some video games, and now you've got to sit in that same environment and work. It's just a hell of a transition uh, to work. And of course, the company uh, goes full Nazi on you. They do. They really just go full Nazi because they can't see what you're doing. If you're unproductive for any reason, they just assume that you're, you know, you're, you're skiving or you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you get a phone call from your manager saying, what were you doing at 10.28 a week ago on Monday? And I was like, what? I don't fucking know what I was doing. Fucking... Maybe I was playing with myself. Who knows? I'm in my own home. I'll do what the fuck I want. <laughs> That's my response. It's like, what the fuck? I don't fucking know. I don't know what I was doing at fucking 1028 yesterday. Probably asleep. Uh, is probably the, the correct answer. You were idle for 42 minutes and 13 seconds. I was like, well, fuck me, man. What the fuck do you want me to do? Am I going to sit there alert and type things? Jesus, this is the kind of this is the kind of shit that you get. I mean, I probably was asleep at that point on that day. Don't want to say that though. I'll just say um, IT issues. IT issues are great when you work from home because IT issues mean you can sit and play Doom Eternal. Oh, the phone lines aren't working. Doom Eternal. That's what I did for most of the time. Uh, oh, this is the servers crashed that we're connecting to. Because uh, we're using a sort of virtual desktop is what we're using. Um, so they can't really spy on what you're doing because when you go outside the virtual desktop, do what you want. Do what the hell you want. Uh, and that's pretty, it's pretty annoying though because they assume if you're outside of it that you're doing nothing. I mean, you might be doing other things though, you know, you might not be typing. Uh, sometimes you like to type things up in a Word document in your PC because your PC is a lot faster than their crappy little thing. Because sometimes you just can't type because the connection's so bad that you sit and type a word and three seconds later it appears. I mean, literally you can count the lag, it's so bad. Uh, it's not measured in milliseconds as we normally describe lag, it's like two or three seconds of lag. So what I do is I log in to Office 365 uh, on my own PC and then I go and type up, if I'm writing a letter to someone or I'm writing an email, I'll go and type that up in Microsoft Word in my own PC and then I upload it to Office 365, which we can do. You can't download from Office 365 and when you access the company version due to confidentiality, but it does allow you to upload to it. So I can upload and then put it in and then send the email across, put it into the virtual desktop and then send an email across. But of course, that doesn't make you productive, of course, and that's not an excuse, apparently. So I was like, fine, I'll just sit there and continue to type this letter very, very slowly. I find my methods quicker, to be honest with you, but you, they can't monitor that and they can't go full Nazi on you, so that is the case. Uh, also, they've never sent me equipment. I'm getting sent a laptop, a company laptop, so they can monitor everything that you do. That's the reason why they're sending you a company laptop, so that they cannot, you cannot cheat the system by going outside of the virtual desktop, because they can't monitor anything outside the virtual desktop. 
Uh, they can only monitor your thing. They can tell how many clicks you've done, you know, what you're typing. So they don't like that, so they're sending me a laptop. So I've got a, managed to get a free, a free laptop. I managed to get a free headset and a free mobile phone out of them. Uh, just because my phone phone line wasn't working correctly. So I was like, yeah, this phone line sucks. Apparently I was on the wrong type of phone line. They'd put me on for months and then complained about my productivity. Anyway, I'm ranting on about work here. Uh, but yeah, I work for a multi, multinational, multi-billion, turns over, what, two billion dollars a year. Can't afford to give me a working, can't afford to get me any equipment when I complain my equipment doesn't work and I have to use my own equipment. I'm using this, I use this microphone that I'm talking on right now. This is a Samsung, Samsung Meteor mic I have, you know, not the most expensive of microphones. It's about 65 quid, so it's like a mid-range-ish microphone. I do have a blue snowball as well. Probably probably look at upgrading this microphone. Maybe if we did more YouTube stuff I would upgrade it because I've had this one for years. But it gets the job done really. I think it gets the job done uh, quite well. Uh, so there's no need to upgrade it. Could buy a blue Yeti but it's just too expensive to be honest and considering you know we don't do I don't do that many YouTube videos and I don't do that much content anymore so I don't really want to spend a lot of money on it if I'm just doing this part time. Don't really make anything from YouTube anymore. Videos are monetized but to be honest we probably get maybe 60 quid every six months if I'm honest. Uh, it's just not not a huge amount of money and I don't really care because it's not my career. Uh, should go back to live stream. We'd like to do more videos. I think I would like to do more. Love to get back to Three, sorry, 4,000 subscribers. We're getting a bit closer to that though. We'd love to get back to that though and then maybe do some more content. So subscribe! So consider that my subscribe begging section of the video. Uh, normally most people put that in at the start but you know I'm putting it in 17 minutes into the video. That's how little I care about you know progress of my channel or anything like that. It's nice to have people watch the videos uh, but I don't overly promote things. I mean, I made a video. I made a video about the Commando Healer, which I'm gonna upload. I made it in May and forgot to upload it. That's how bad it is. The video I made about getting banned from Steam, I uploaded it a week before it went live, and I just had it as private until the video processing had finished. I forgot to upload it. That's how little I really care about my about my sort of videos to be honest with you it's just i forgot really it's something i upload a video and, oh crap that video is sitting there uh private i better uh you know make that live uh, so i don't really focus on it it is just a hobby essentially i'm a hobbyist youtuber uh not full time like we used to be we used to upload videos try to upload videos every day or every other day now we're uploading maybe one maybe two, maybe one one video per month uh as bad as that uh, but yeah, just trying to get things sorted out. If we can get a better work-life balance, we'll maybe go back and do some live streaming. We'd really like to play. We'd like to play stuff like yeah, Kingdoms of Amalur would be fun. Avengers is interesting. Um, it's an interesting Destiny clone. We'd like to play that for a bit. Uh, we'd like to play. Might be might do some more Nintendo stuff because I quite like playing on the Switch. I do that on my break at work. That's what I do. That is one of the advantages of being on your break working from home is you can just fire up your Nintendo Switch or if you're just uh, on hold and waiting to get through to another department you can sit and fire up your Nintendo Switch because they can't watch you and you can do what the hell you want. Uh, although they'll say you've been idle for 4 minutes and 17 seconds. What have you been doing? I've been making this YouTube video, that's what I've been doing. Uh, but anyway, that is all for this video, so thank you for joining me. I just thought I'd give a quick update. It's now going to 20 minutes, this video. Uh, just, to, just to show you that we're still around, still got plans, plenty of plans. I mean, I, I've never ran out of ideas with my YouTube uh, channel. I've never run out of ideas. It's just having the time to execute those ideas. That's my problem because I'm working full time and if I was doing this full time I'd have videos out every other day because I've never ever ran out of ideas. I've, I've had plenty of ideas for videos, I've started many as a video and just never had the time to finish it and then the videos sort of become irrelevant and I thought yeah better move on to something else. Uh, and again that's just a cycle that we go through is oh I want to talk about that, uh, that's a bit late now to talk about that. But anyway, that is all for this video, so thank you for joining me, and we'll see you again soon, and goodbye.